Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is, Let Go My Ego. Beloved family, our text says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. James 3, 13-16 Family, I know I'm dating myself, so some of you come walk with me. Remember the commercial, Lego My Ego, where two children grab the Ego waffle, trying to keep it for themselves and from each other. Well, the title of our message is a word for us to let go our ego, because our ego can cause us to grab and hold on to things in life and become selfish and self-centered. It's all about me. Our ego can create imaginary audiences of people that can influence egotistical decisions. The ego constantly craves attention, whether positive or negative. Negative attention still feeds the ego because at least the focus is on me and people are watching me, even if the audience is imaginary. And it may not be the most flattering light, but in some way at least is still on me and I feel important. Often, this craving for attention leads us to boast and talk about ourselves, our looks, our talents, accomplishments, and ambitions. We always have an answer, even if we don't. We begin to see silence as a negative thing because it means the spotlight is not on us anymore, when in fact, it is not on anyone. The ego can't stand anyone else getting attention. Someone who is egotistical is full of himself and completely self-absorbed. To be egotistical is to have an inflated view of your self-importance. Basically, to think you're better than everyone else, even in a sense of being worshipped. We can search history and find politicians, athletes, celebrities, and entertainers that were egotistical. One entertainer once said that his greatest regret was not being able to watch himself perform. There was one angel who by heaven accounts was full of himself and self-absorbed. This is what the sovereign law says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Your settings and mountings were made in gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. Ezekiel 28, 12-16 What a beautiful guardian cherub made in perfection. He walked on the mountain of God in his holy presence. But he began to notice his own splendor. I wonder if our ego makes us look at ourselves from the outside, like looking at a mirror. Of all the wonderful attributes that God Elohim described of Lucifer, I wonder when did Lucifer start to believe and see himself that way? As the entertainer said, I only wish I could see myself perform. But we see that when this happens, judgment and destruction are the end result. The ego knows that the end of itself is destruction, but it takes us there anyway, because it can't help itself. Self-absorbed, self-aggrandizement, and self-worship are its traits. El Elyon, God Most High says, You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. 
So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. So I made a fire come out of you and it consumed you and I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. For you have come to a horrible end and will be no more. Ezekiel 28, 15 and 19. The Most High said, I made a fire come out of you and it consumed you. The very fiery passion we have to be famous, to be successful, to be exalted, to gain the world will consume us and cause us to lose our souls. I remember the little success that I had got to my head because I started to listen and believe other people who I call hype men or praise shouters. You know, the person in a kingdom who is always shouting praises to the king. I actually saw this in Swaziland at King Maswati III's banquet. There were two to three men that stood up in various parts of the room at random and they would shout, O oh, King, you are merciful. O oh, King, live forever. But the danger is when a mere mortal king or man starts to believe the hype. We can now relate to Revelation 4, 8. It says, each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. Revelation 4, 8. What an awesome scene, except this is no hype at all. They are not describing God, they are ascribing God. They have eyes all around and all they could see is holiness. So whenever they look at God, they shout, holy. Praise be to God. We have to let go our ego and recognize that all glory and honor and power belongs to him. It's not about my will, says Christ Jesus. It's about the will of the Father. Much love.